How's it going, everyone? Zane here with Everything Vibe. want to thank you all for tuning in again. We have another special treat for you today. It is an interview with Thomas from Containment Initiative. Now, he is the sole developer behind Containment Initiative, and for those unfamiliar with it, it is a wave-based zombie first-person shooter, but it does bring its own unique aspects of gameplay and mechanics, and the gun mechanics are awesome in it, and so... Can't can't say enough about the game. And Thomas, he's just inspiring, absolutely inspiring. And, you know, one of the coolest things that um, I think I got personally, both Ronnie and I got from the interview, was the fact that he created the game from start to finish in about a month. And it launched in September, and it's been out for a little bit now. And he's been just adding updates left and right. And we actually go into those updates in the episode today. So I really hope you enjoy. Make sure you check out the game. And also, we have a special giveaway on the podcast. Now, Thomas was kind enough to give us a couple Steam keys to help promote the game, help us promote the podcast. So if you'd like to win a free Steam key to get a copy of Containment Initiative, here's what you got to do. You can either leave a rating and review on the podcast on iTunes and or you can subscribe on YouTube and leave a comment. If you do both, you get both entries in. So just go to YouTube and type in Everything Vive and you'll find our channel there. We'll run this contest for about a week, so make sure you get your entries in and we'll announce a winner on one of the episodes next week. Enough with the introduction. Hope you guys enjoy the interview. Here we go. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Everything Vive. We have a special guest today. Uh, his name is Thomas, and he is the developer behind Containment Initiative. Thomas, how you doing, man? Uh, doing great. Happy to be here. Oh no, we we are very happy that you are here. We're very excited about it. So, just a little background on Containment Initiative. It is available at, in the Steam Store as we speak. It is a virtual reality shooter for the HTC Vive, and. Um, it's probably one of the coolest uh, zombie shooters, uh, first-person shooters that I've I've played so far. So I would love to get uh, just some background. What was the inspiration for Containment Initiative? What's the story behind it? Um, well, I guess probably the best place to start is, um, you know, I've been following VR for quite a bit. I had a, um, an Oculus Rift DK2, and uh, I've been kind of toying with developing something. I've never done it before. Um, and then once I saw the vibe, it just kind of hit me and, you know, I happened to be at lunch with a friend and we started kind of throwing some ideas around and, uh, you know, originally it was actually going to be something else, but, you know, I guess I see so many early access titles on steam that don't, you know, live up to the the promises that they, they make when they, uh, when they originally release and early access. And I kind of wanted something that I could, you know, start that was simple enough for my skill level at the time and expand on it over time, which hopefully I've done to this point. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I got my vibe, I want to say, about a month, month and a half ago. And I know Containment Initiative was one of the uh, the first games that I got because I think it came out roughly around that time. And uh, yeah, you've had a couple updates since then, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. I think within the first week, um, I got a new uh, assault rifle in there, a, uh, a laser attachment, kind of got the beginnings of the attachment system. Uh, integrated into the game there and um, yeah just did a big one actually on Friday the uh, 0.5 update uh, which basically takes us from like four different infected types to about 11 now Um, so that was kind of one of my chief uh, complaints with it you know in its early days is there really wasn't enough variety and I know I've seen that (laughs) feedback from a few other people so hopefully now with 11 um, and you know some of them are kind of do the same things but they have some different animations now but I've also introduced some new types that you know are maybe faster and have less health uh, but don't do as much damage uh, and they've got some slower ones that will hit you a little bit harder yeah no I mean I actually had a chance because uh, I think we'd been going back and forth via email and I had a chance to try out the uh, the 0.5 update over the weekend I, a lot of fun man I like uh, I like the new animations I like the the helicopter that comes in when it extracts you out. And yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, I do, I, I would like to ask, you know, how long have you been developing and like, what got you into it? Um, well, yeah, like I said, you know, once I, you know, first started with VR, um, it was, it was, it's always something I really wanted to do. It's just, it was unfortunately never really the field that I got into at the time. Um, but yeah, once I saw the vibe, I was like, you know, wow, this would just be fantastic. And, you know, I've, I've, I've done some modding in the past for like Half-Life 2. So, you know, I had... I guess a little bit of experience, but, um, you know, I got into unity and just started learning some C sharp. And luckily there's so many great tutorials out there that, uh, you know, it was pretty easy to get set up. Um, luckily there's a, a group that 
uh, seemed to hang around the, uh, the the subreddit for the Vive, uh, and I believe his name is uh, Thestin Fox. He's created the Steam uh, VR Unity Toolkit, which was like hugely, hugely helpful. Just getting started out at first, just to you know get you kind of a, a base set up there where you can get in and start playing around and toying around with some stuff. That's really cool. Hey, uh, this is Ronnie, by the way, and I've I've been listening in uh, as well. I just wanted to chime in just to ask you, uh, you know, Thomas. Uh, what are some of the uh, the differences in developing for VR specifically uh, when compared to, you know, you said you had done mods for Half-Life 2 before and some other. I'm just kind of curious. I mean, I, I, I am somewhat familiar with Unity development, but I've never, I've never worked on, on VR or anything like that. Um, what's it like to actually actually test what you're, what you're creating? And is there, is there some, is it more difficult to kind of, you know, know in advance what something's going to look like until you're actually, you know, testing it out in the headset or, or if you could, you know, kind of talk about what developing in, in VR specifically is like. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can tell you just from, from my experience with it, um, probably the, the, the biggest problem with it is going to be your uh, Vive head strap. It's going to be completely shot after about a month. <laughs> um, you know, it's literally change a line of code here, or, you know, move this little asset around and, you know, go test it out. So you're doing this hundreds and hundreds of times a day. Um, but no, I mean, just from a beginning developer's perspective, I would say uh, VR is very challenging, just mainly because there's really not a lot out there right now as far as tutorials on it. Um, as I said, there's a few things, um, but luckily with Unity, uh, there's a lot of great tutorials, a lot of great um, content out there that you know can really get someone started. And I think that's the the big jump that you have to make is you know getting comfortable with working with the um, Steam VR, um, you know every everything that goes into that as far as um, developing into Unity. Are Are you able to actually make changes within the headset or no? Um, not within the headset, but, you know, I just keep the headset close by. You can go into the editor and, you know, change a little thing, and then you can just play it right there from the editor, so it's very, very convenient. Um, so, yeah, you're literally just, you know, changing little things here and there, and unfortunately, if you were doing a, a regular game, you know, you could test it on your monitor, so you yeah. know, get the, it's a big process of getting up and sitting down every single time you do it, but uh, you get used to it. Huh. But, yeah, I mean, just uh, not having any tutorials to go off of was probably the, the biggest challenge, but like I said, there's still a few good things out there, and... Once you get the hang of it, after uh, the first few weeks were definitely the hardest. Um, when I initially sat down and started looking at trying to create something, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of things out there, you, you know, they'll tell you create something simple first because if you try to go big, it's generally not going to work out. And you know, first I was having some ideas for like a World War II like trench shooter, and then after I got in and I got my first gun working, I'm just thinking to myself like, wow, this is just going to be you know an insane amount of work. Why don't I do something that I know I can finish? I know I can you know make it a, a great game and you know, charge a cheap price for it. I mean, obviously, there's other wave shooters out there, but um, hopefully, put an, uh, an original enough spin on it so that you know, for seven bucks or ten bucks or whatever it ends up being, um, someone would be happy and see the value in that. Yeah, no, I was actually thinking. I mean, one of the the unique twists that I think uh, was really a great idea on, on your part uh, for containment initiative was um, the addition of having the extraction. So I, I don't know if you want to elaborate a little bit on on what went into uh, you know your thoughts on on kind of just the gameplay process in general, but I mean when compared to a lot of other wave based shooters on on the Vive, I think one of the additional strategy points that Containment Initiative has is that you actually have the option of you know of, of leaving and extracting yourself from you know the gameplay to save your your money and cash and use it you know for future rounds so I, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about about how you came up with that idea yeah you know it was something that uh it just kind of happened on the fly um i guess it was just me just looking at everything else that was out there you know i played the brookhaven demo i played some other stuff and you know i thought okay well the, the wave shooter is great but you know, how can I differentiate just just enough to, you know, make something that it's going to be interesting to people. And I guess I like the system of, you know, putting the onus on the player to figure out what's the most that I can push myself and still get away and still progress through this game. Yeah, because, you know, of course, there's going to be the frustrations when, you know, you sit there and, you know, you go for three or four minutes. And, you know, uh, one thing I've tried to do specifically is make the playtime fairly short because um, I myself have noticed that, uh unless you're playing like Elite Dangerous or something like that, that you can really sit down and play for a long time, the VR sessions still tend to be pretty short. Um, you know, even with your 20 and $30 games, it's really hard to sit there and play for like a three to five hour stretch like you would a, a normal game, at least for me and some friends that I've seen, you know, with, with similar experiences. 
Yeah, no, that that makes a lot of sense. And and I, I do think that's actually a really good, I mean, containment ish, initiative because of the extraction uh, option almost to me f- feels like a like an old school arcade game in a way because it's yeah, yeah. it's very con- it's you know no pun intended but it's like a contained you know situation and you feel like you know you you're you're in control of kind of you know what you want to be in control of and when things get too hairy you can you can you can find a way out and then it's it's a it's a nice way of creating like a short a short goal for the player i think to you know you know s- in some of the wave based shooters that I've played, you do get that sense of fatigue where you get to the point, like you were saying, where you've been playing, you know, with, with the headset on your head for, you know, 15, 20 minutes, you're starting to get a little bit tired. And the idea of having waves that are going to be, you know, constantly coming out, you know, out at you until you lose is in and of itself something that can lead to you failing because you just, you know, I don't feel like playing anymore. Whereas in containment initiative, when you get to that point, you can hit the extraction button and it gives you kind of that second wind of, okay, let me just get through this next, you know, this next set period of time. I'm going to try my best. And then, and then you can get out in a more comfortable fashion and just, you know, shut it off and feel like you accomplished something. So yeah, I just wanted to give you kudos to that. I think it, it, it really works very well. Yeah, no, I, I, I appreciate that. Um, like you said, you know, I, I've had some fatigue myself playing wave shooters and, you know, I just figured if I can break it up into the short play sessions and really give the player, you know, make, feel give them that feeling like they can progress in the game, you know, just by dedicating five or ten minutes to it. Um, and you know, honestly, too, with the with the zero point five update, um, I actually went back and rewrote the um, the spawning script for the enemies, um, so the game actually does get quite a bit more challenging. I'm sure it's still going to need tweaking. I'm waiting for the complaints to roll in, but so far they haven't, because <laughs> um, the game did get quite a bit more challenging with this last update. Um, the, the 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 flow of the game, the difficulty increases at a much more natural speed now. You know, now you've got you know kind of the one or two or three minute mark, and um, you know, I find myself in more situations where, you know, I hit that button and then, you know, within 10 seconds, I'm just completely surrounded and mobbed, which had never happened before, which <laughs> I kind of like the, the stress inducing factor of it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, just to give you an idea too, you know, I'm, I'm still kind of going back and replacing some of the initial uh, assets like the buttons. I had just had some basic stuff I was using for the buttons before and now they're actually some higher quality models. Um, but uh, eventually I want to get to a system where basically the player will have some sort of uh, radio that they can pick up and use. Um, I feel like that might be a little bit more realistic or a little bit more satisfying to use. So it's just, you know, one of the ideas I'm kind of throwing around for it right now. Yeah. No, I mean, just to echo what Ronnie said, I think, I think all of these things, I, I did notice the buttons. I noticed the extraction. I noticed the, uh, the zombie or the spawning rates to get a little bit crazier as time goes on. So I, I like all those factors. I hope, uh, I hope you don't get too many complaints and if they're complaints, then hopefully they just steer you in a even cooler direction. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's actually been pretty interesting. I, I haven't seen a whole lot of complaints about it, um, but one one thing I have noticed is, for whatever reason, and I, it, it's obviously just the weapon mechanics, is uh, people in the U.S. don't complain about it, but the people in the Europe seem in, in Europe seem to have a really really hard time with the game. And I, you know, I'm guessing I've talked to people that you know they're saying, hey, you know, in my entire life I've never held a gun before. How do I do this? Uh, wow. And then when you sit down, you know, explain how it works, you're like, oh wow, this is actually pretty cool. Um, but I don't see that from the U S folks at all. So I'm assuming, you know, that's just one of those funny cultural differences, but yeah, it seems to, <laughs> it seems to appeal to the U S folks quite a bit more. Uh, I which, guess, I guess know, we it, love our guns here, right? Yeah, we do. <laughs> uh, at least, at least we see, we see how they're used on all types of television and T and movies. Yeah, so exactly. Every, every kid but, knows, um, knows from us. real quick. I, I just had a question. You were talking about, you know, changing the buttons and, and changing, you know, how you can extract from, from a gameplay, that kind of thing. I was wondering, uh, one of the things that I, I noticed right away when I played a containment initiative for the first time was that I thought you did a, a really good job of laying out the UI. Uh, when you're in the helicopter at the beginning, uh, it's very clear to the player that you know you have options of, of, you know, well, I guess you have options the further along you get in the game, but at the beginning, you know, choosing your gun, choosing this, the level, all of that stuff, it's, it's laid out in a very natural way. So I, I don't know if, if you'd be able to spend just a moment talking about developing the UI and, and how easy or difficult that was using Unity and, and virtual reality specifically. Um, yeah, the UI actually wasn't too bad. Um, I know, you know, there's there's some things that are uh, pre-built for you in Unity, um, but most of like the gun unlocks and everything, that was stuff that I kind of just had to figure out on my own. 
Um, so yeah, that was actually a lot of fun and pretty challenging, uh, you know, just to build that. Cause that was like right when I was starting out and, you know, still tr- just, you know, learning new things every day about it. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I hope the UI is, you know, fairly easy to understand. It's something that I'm constantly trying to iterate on and I'm actually trying to work on some options right now. And, uh, you know, unfortunately I'm running out of space uh, physically in the helicopter. So it's looking <laughs> like it's probably going to be some sort of menu to bring up. Cause I know I've had a few complaints. Oh, you know, the music's too loud. I wish I could turn it off, which, you know, it's, mm. that's a fair complaint. I can, I can see that. Oh, um, the music's my favorite part. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I don't know. I, I, I found the music and I was like, wow, you know, this, I, it, it reminds me, you know, a lot of like killing floor or something where, you know, you can just go in and kind of like jam out and get all amped up. Um, <laughs> I, kinda, I think it definitely you, gives you that adrenaline rush. And, you know, when you're yeah, shooting zombies, yeah. what more do you want? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I think one of my complaints, too, is, you know, I've, I've heard some other people echo it is, you know, right now I've only got the one track in there. So that's going to be what I'm going to work on next is to try to randomize that just a little bit more. Um, but, yeah, you know, you'll, you'll probably see, depending on what games you've you've played in the last few years, you'll see bits and pieces here. You know, the helicopter, it's, you know, it's pretty clear. It's from a game that came out in the last couple of years that I really like the way that they did their kind of menu system. Um and, you know, there's also some some cues for, you know, I, might, I think I was playing Overwatch at the time, and I really like the audio cues that they that they use in the game to signify when certain events happen. Um, so I didn't you know, even, when, boss- <laughs> when you mentioned that, I didn't even think, it, I, I'm i just going to to venture to guess that the helicopter is from Metal Gear Solid Five, maybe? Yeah, that would, that would be right. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, I, you know, it, it was something that kind of stuck with me. I really liked how it was done. Um to just have that like really cool feeling like you know you're gearing up before a mission yeah you do um, so you do get that feeling you you yeah, get that yeah, feeling yeah. for sure as soon as you and mentioned you know, that i was like you know what it feels <laughs> a lot like it it feels like you're in that helicopter yeah yeah you know i like the feeling of you know, like i said gearing up and you know there's going to be some more uh some more tools and stuff that come that come out pretty soon um i'm, I'm actually well i haven't announced it yet but i'm actually working on some uh, night vision stuff right now so because uh, right now, actually, I've got it so where the player kind of has to choose between the laser sight or the flashlight, because I think both at once might be just a little bit too much at the moment. Um, mm. So the night vision is going to be kind of a higher level item that allows the player to, you know, be able to see and still have the accuracy of the laser sight. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, oh yeah, back to what I was saying about the uh, the audio cues. Uh, you know, I really wanted to make sure that the player knew what was going on based on what they heard around them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I still need to go back, and the zombies need some uh, a fair bit more work on the audio because uh, right now they're not making nearly enough. But I wanted to specifically outline when that boss spawned. You should be able to hear that roar in the distance, and you know to watch out because that thing will come in and and kill you pretty quick if you can't get to him first. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's definitely a good point. <laughs> that's um, happened to me a lot of times. <laughs> Well, well, we've been talking about, um, I guess, just kind of incremental changes and stuff that you have, you know, little short stepping stones that you have planned for the future development of the game. I'm just curious, long term, where do you see this going? Like, where would you like to see Containment Initiative at its peak? Or, you know, maybe what what is one of your higher tiered goals that you're looking to get Containment Initiative to? Like, would this ever be... Uh, you know, more explorative in terms of a campaign style mission or like what, I guess, where do you, where do you see this going? Or ideally, what would you like to to focus on? You know, when I first started off, you know, I just kind of wanted it to be simple. I have seen some feedback that, you know, they'd like to see some sort of like a campaign mode where, you know, basically you jump in and depending on how many zombies you kill, uh, that affects, you know, later missions. Um, That'd certainly be something to look at. I can tell you the stuff that I am working on right now. Um, I do have a, a mission that should hopefully, you know, barring any major concerns I have with it, uh, should hopefully be coming within the next month or two uh, that does actually have some artificial uh, locomotion uh, in it. And basically it's, uh, it's going to be called like a scavenge mode. The player's going to go around and essentially grab supply crates. And I guess the catch is, it, is obviously that you can't reload while you have a supply crate in your hand. So if you're shooting, you've got to drop the supply crate and then grab your magazine and put it in the gun. So I'm hoping to add a little bit more stress and tension to that. Uh, but yeah, I've got it. I've got Reloading isn't there. enough, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. And, you know, I'm surprised I, I've seen, you know, I've tried to iterate on the reloading process as much as possible. Cause like, man, I, I look back where it was at day one and I just, I uh, wasn't happy with it at all. But, um, luckily, you know, using some of that feedback from the community, I feel like it's, it's getting to a pretty good place right now where most people can hop in and, um, it's fairly intuitive. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the scavenge mode, um, I'm hoping to have that done soon. I know I've had, definitely had some questions about that because uh, people are, obviously sick of the wave shooters at this point yeah when you when you mentioned locomotion i mean uh, you know immediately what came to my mind was you know teleportation and kind of different ways of moving around the environment i mean most of the environments in containment initiative you know look large enough to where you would be able to potentially do that but i didn't know like 
you know, some other thoughts that popped into my head when you were saying that, well, you know, if you add locomotion or teleportation or that kind of thing, um, how that would impact spawn points and, and the rest of the design it is, are, are you thinking about adding that type of movement into the game or, or just in certain modes or kind of what was your, what, what are your thoughts on that? So my initial plan is I want to just kind of have a standalone map so that I can roll it out to people, see how they feel about it, um, and try to take some of that feedback into account because they've obviously been hugely helpful and, you know, pointing out, you know, flaws or things that they'd like to see, you know, change in the game. Um, but as far as the spawning, yeah, that was, that was kind of a big challenge. I actually got some work done on that. I think it was not this last weekend, but during the week. Um, basically, I had to build a new system that takes into account the player's location and says, hey, what's the farthest spawn point away? Because obviously you don't want to break the smoke and mirror illusion and have a zombie just appear out of nowhere right in front yeah. of the player. Um, so that was kind of challenging because obviously with the wave shooter, you you know, you know get to be able to kind of take some liberties with, with stuff like spawn systems and you don't have to hide it nearly as much as you would in a normal game. Oh, that's, re- that's really interesting. I'm, I'm really excited to, to try that out, so... Yeah, well, I'm I'm glad we're getting a, a sneak peek into turn into what's coming because that that would definitely add an, another layer into a game that I think already sets itself apart in terms of the uh, the wave based and zombie shooters out there. So, uh, well, I want to be respectful of your time. I got maybe just one or two more questions for you, if that's all right. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I'd love to be able to pivot away from containment initiative specifically, maybe just talk VR in general. Um, I, this is one of the questions I think I'd sent over earlier. It's more so just a hypothetical. Uh, I guess as a developer, you have a unique uh, perspective on the VR landscape. And I'm just curious, what is one wish that you have for the future of VR platforms? And, uh, you know, if you were, uh, so the, the hypothetical question then is, if you were the, uh, the CEO of HTC or Oculus, like where would you want to focus your, your company's time and energy resources, et cetera, all that stuff? Well, you know, I mean, we've seen some of the stuff that Oculus has been doing. Obviously, you know, I would say, in my opinion, we need to keep things as open as possible right now. I mean, I was looking at uh, sales numbers for the Vive the other day, and I think we're just now reaching maybe 150,000. Yeah, uh, that's if not right. Just a little bit less. Um, so, you know, it's certainly, you know, it's quite a few units out there. And I've seen that it looks like the PlayStation VR is selling really well, actually. Um, but I, I would say that's probably the number one concern right now is they've got to get the price down. Um, you know, luckily we've seen like the, the 970s dropped in price luckily, cause I think when the buy first came out, it was still sitting around 350. So, mm-hmm. you know, already you're be able, you're able to get a VR capable PC for probably, I would imagine six to $800 when it was easily a thousand or more before. Um, so, you know, I'd just like to see the price come down and, um, you know, it'd, it'd be really nice if we could get a solution that did not require the tracking cameras. Cause right now it's, you know, it's still a little bit of a niche product, but you know, certainly when friends come over, they're amazed and it, it sells itself. Um, but yeah, you know, just seeing that price come down and seeing more and more people get in there. Um, I'm actually really happy to see that the, the PlayStation VRs seems to be getting a really well, uh, good reception so far. Um, so I think that's good for everybody. No, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, I'm, I'm living proof that I, I went over to Ronnie's place when he first got it. Cause he's been into, he's been following VR for quite a while. And so he showed it to me and I had to come home and have it just felt like a little kid in a toy store. <laughs> yeah, it so. was, it was amazing. I, it, it, it really is. So, yeah, I mean, I'm excited. Uh, Ronnie and I have been talking and kind of following the developments for like the controllers, the base stations that I think they're developing. And hopefully, you know, if they can uh, if they can find better parts, more efficient ways to create it, you know, that would help bring down the costs overall. Yeah. And we need to get rid of that wire, too. That wire, you know, even after yes, probably the couple hundred yes. hours I've put into it, playing around in Unity and getting this thing um, up and running, it's still every once in a while I'll still step on that thing. Well, you know, I, I do have to say that Containment Initiative, of all the games I have right now, Containment Initiative is the one responsible for the most amount of wire being kicked out <laughs> because <laughs> all, all the friends that I have that come over, when they can't figure out how to reload or they've just been totally overwhelmed, they just run for the run for the hills. So it's, yeah. it's funny to watch when you're not in it. But <laughs> Yeah, you certainly got to watch out for those walls. <laughs> that, that too. There's been a lot of funny moments, but well, I, I want to thank you for your time, man. We really do appreciate it. And uh, you know, for those listening right now, if you haven't checked out Containment Initiative, I can't recommend it enough. You know, I've played uh, all, if not or most, if not all, the other zombie shooters out there, and this is by far the most fun. And as you heard from from Thomas, there's a lot of really cool things on the pipeline. So there will be a link to uh, th- there will be a link to the game and Steam uh, in the show notes. So make sure you check it out. Make sure you show some support. And uh, yeah, Tom, Thomas, is there anything else you'd like to, uh, I, I don't know, is, is there a way that people can connect with you or you'd like them to connect with you? Or This is, this is, this is the uh, shameless promotion time. So whatever it is you want to oh. say to the audience, please feel free. 
Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, well, so uh, probably right now, the best way to get a hold of uh, me or actually I've got a, um, a friend that's helping out with community management uh, finally because that's kind of been, you know, it's, it's difficult to go back and forth trying to spend time when I want to be spending time de uh, developing the game. Um, but yeah, just go hit up the, the game Steam forum. Uh, you can also reach me at uh, it's just containmentinitiative at gmail.com for now. Um, but yeah, stop on by the, the Steam forum. You can check out, you know, what people are complaining about that day. Um, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. There's really, I, believe it or not, there's really not too many complaints. So I've been pretty happy with that. Um, but yeah, you can see, you know, you know who gets responded to. You know, you can feel free to leave some feedback, even if you don't buy the game. Um, but I, I would love to hear what people think about it. Um, but yeah, other than that, I don't have anything. Um, you know, just keep an eye out, see what's coming out next, even if you decide not to buy it. Awesome. Well, I'm I'm going to tell people to buy it. So you guys should definitely go out there, buy it, support the support the movement, and uh, go kill some zombies. This is the best way to do it in VR right now. <laughs> so, uh, well, Thomas, again, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we hope to talk to you soon uh, for any future updates or things like that. We'll definitely be in touch. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys for having me on. It was fun. All right. Thanks a lot, Thomas. <laughs>